Water is the essence of our existence. Without it, there can be no life. Civilizations began next to water. But as populations grow, especially in arid regions, there is not enough to go around. In the past, decisions about water have been guided by a very simple formula, which said, estimate human demands for water and build a new water project to meet it. And that equation was simple and it worked as long as water was abundant. But it's not working anymore because water is becoming scarce. Concrete dams have dominated our management of water in the past 50 years. Dams tested and built to master the power of nature. The story of water has been the story of controlling it. 38,000 large dams have been built in all. Dams to store water and control floods. Dams for irrigation and hydroelectricity. Dams that have inundated canyons and drained wetlands. Now, the dam building era in the United States is coming to a close. The best sites are taken. The economic and environmental costs are too high. And Americans are beginning to turn to conservation. But developing countries seeking to provide water and power for growing populations still covet these engineering marvels. They've sent their best and brightest to be trained by the Bureau of Reclamation builders of the super dams of the American West. Right after Hoover Dam was completed, the world recognized that a great achievement had occurred. And the Bureau of Reclamation was besieged. And we ended up as the training center for young engineers uh, sent here from Thailand, from Turkey, uh, Ethiopia, all around the world, actually. India was an example of uh, everywhere I went in India, they thought I was the second coming of the Buddha. More than any other nation, India has staked its future on large dams. In 1963, Prime Minister Nehru predicted that dams would become the temples of modern India. You have done me in inviting me today. 2,200 dams have created electricity and supplied irrigation to feed the hungry subcontinent. But the dams have taken a heavy human toll. Some 20 million people have lost their homes. In recent years, a controversy has erupted over the damming of the Narmada River. <laughs> To fight the damming of the Narmada, Protesters have gone on mass hunger strikes. Led by Meda Patkar, members of the movement even threatened to drown themselves in the rising floodwaters. Construction has stopped while the government reviews the project. So far, 60 villages have been inundated. It is unclear how India will proceed.
A hemisphere away on the border between Argentina and Paraguay, construction continues on the massive Yasrita Dam. Biologists worry that the reservoir created by the dam will cause an outbreak of schistosomiasis, what some call the disease of hydroelectric dams in the tropics. Snails like these breed in the stagnant reservoirs, releasing a parasitic worm that penetrates human skin, damaging the liver and spleen. People are not the only ones at risk. As this region is flooded, 70 kinds of mammals and 300 bird species will lose their home. In a region where rainforest habitat is rapidly disappearing. Efforts to rescue some of the larger animals rarely succeed. Many will die from the stresses of capture. Where the dam building era is really going uh, gangbusters now is in countries like Indonesia, China, Malaysia, Brazil, uh, other South American countries, Chile. Uh, some of the most beautiful rivers on the planet are now being turned into reservoirs. And some of the biggest dams ever built, bigger than anything that we've built, are being built in countries like Brazil and China. In China, Work goes on to build Three Gorges Dam, the world's largest hydroelectric project. Eventually rising 600 feet high and over a mile wide, the dam will create an enormous lake that will stretch nearly 400 miles upstream. China's leaders say Three Gorges will fuel its industrial revolution and save millions of people from frequent floods along the Yangtze River. When it's finished, it's going to be the largest dam in the world. It will supply one-tenth of electricity for China. Critics of Three Gorges say the project will create a $30 billion bog because silt will build up behind the dam. The project will flood the nation's most beautiful region, as famous in China as the Grand Canyon is in the U.S. Over a million people in Riverside villages will be displaced. Even the World Bank, long a supporter of large dams, has withdrawn from Three Gorges. But China says it will go ahead and find its own financing. In late 1993, Dan Beard, then chief of the U.S. Bureau of Reclamation, withdrew his agency's technical support for Three Gorges. There's no better example of a project we shouldn't be involved in than Three Gorges Dam. We've moved away from water project construction in the United States, and I felt it was hypocritical uh, for us to continue to be involved in the largest dam construction project in the world. Uh, there are better, uh, easier, and cheaper ways to solve uh, the problems of flood control and power production than Three Gorges Dam. Moving from large construction projects to a culture of conservation requires a major change in the way people think about water. Such a transition can take decades. And many developing countries face staggering problems of both water quality and water supply. 